Welcome to another message from Citizen Heights. We are located in the nation's capital, where our heart is to inspire hope, remove limitations, and help you experience God's possible for your life. Join Pastors Michael and Heather Giroux in their passion to help you live your best life. We hope you enjoy today's encouraging and uplifting message. Happy Vision Day, and uh, I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about God's vision. Vision for his church, vision for your life, and uh, vision is big, isn't it? Vision is big stuff. We had a saying, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, I don't mind telling you, and uh, we had a saying that new levels means new devils. And that means when there's bigger vision and the next step beyond, there's always new adversaries and resistance to that next step. And, and I see it primarily show up in church in the form of technology glitches. And so if you're like me here at our Tenley Town Campus, I'm sure Dulles Campus because it has new cameras, new screens, new audio system. It's just all new over there. And uh, here it's about... Uh, 18 years old. And so uh, we, have, we had a lot of technology glitches, and, and so it kind of bothers me for a few minutes. And then I go, you know what? New levels, new devils. And old equipment, kind of glitchy. But I remember it was 19 years ago, um, our church had its very first vision day. And maybe you grew up in a church that didn't talk about vision or have like a day set aside. But I can tell you this, you want to know where your church is going, not just in a sense of vision and mission, generally speaking, but specifically, where are we going right now? How can I have a hand uh, in the vision and how can I be part of the vision? I, I told our Tenleytown campus, but it's worth repeating, uh, that make sure you go to a church where the vision is big enough that there's a place for you to get your hand on it, to help for it and support it. When we bought this building about 18 years ago, uh, this was condemned. The Tenley Town campus, I know you're sitting in here today and going, well, it seems reasonable. It was condemned. It seems reasonable if you haven't gone to the men's room or the ladies' room and, and some of the, the dark corners of our facade here, but we, we are thankful for our building. Would not be terribly upset if it was accidentally burned down and insurance was forced to rebuild it for us, but it is a beautiful building. But when we purchased it, 26 commercial dumpsters filled with debris we pulled out of this building. I mean, it was a mess. It was a big mess, and I remember we were in the kitchen one day, and we were pulling out this four-inch slab of marble that they had for their commercial countertop space. And the Lord used this as an illustration. I hope, I hope it catches you as well, but there was about 10 of us, and we all got like a little corner around this very, very large, heavy piece of marble. And we started to carry it through the kitchen. The only problem was it had a doorway that we had to get through. And this was about four feet wide, maybe eight feet long, very heavy. And it took a person on every little place that you could get a hand. But as we got to that door, it was a choke point. And we had people were like letting go just for a second so they could rotate and get under the door and take, take, get their hand on it on the other side of the door. And I cannot tell you how difficult it got as soon as one hand came off it was scary. Like the weight was scary. And then we, and we were saying, get, get back on it, get back on it. You were not just hanging on to this countertop in a sign of solidarity. <laughs> there was a practical reality that you holding that weight made all the difference for us to deliver this thing and get it out of here. And I want to share vision with you today, and I want you to understand There are moments and seasons where your hand comes off, but let it be for a moment. Let it just be for a moment. Don't let it become something where all of a sudden you're not connected, you're not attached, and the weight becomes great. And us delivering the vision God gives us means it's us. God does it, but he uses us. And so I want to talk about vision, and it was 19 years ago I I began to tell you, our church had its first vision day, and we did it at a restaurant on Capitol Hill. 
it was a restaurant, I don't know if it's still there, Elephant and Castle. Um, it was this restaurant, one of, our, one of our people worked at the restaurant, and so they said, hey, I can get the back room for really cheap. And so we didn't have a building, so 19 years ago, we walk into Elephant and Castle. I've got my own projector that I brought with me. I brought my projector into the thing, and I have my computer, and I'm projecting it onto the wall of this back room, and I don't think there was any more than maybe 18 people in this little back room, and we're talking about vision, and in each PowerPoint slide that I had de designed myself and uh, advanced it, to share the vision, this is the church we're building here. This is the church that we see. And it was just the beginnings. And, I, and now I, I pan out 19 years later, and I go, look what God has done. Uh, the people, right? The ministry, the impact, the lives, and, and the salvations, and the young people, and, and Jesus, and, and uh, just mountaintop moments. Amen? We've seen missions and outreach and buildings and facilities and just truly blown away by some of the high ground God said, take this mountain. And we're each running a leg of that vision. You know, we're carrying the way in the story that God is writing, this is our lap, this is our chapter, this is, this is our moment to, to say, God, what are you writing through my life? And, and I believe, and I want to just tell you, God has more mountains for us. I, I'm so grateful for a historic landmark site in D.C. I'm, his, I'm grateful for the, the footing uh, that we have over there at our Dulles campus, beautiful building and six acres, almost seven acres, and the people and the reach and all the things that we celebrated at our uh, God Did experience this past December. But uh, God has more mountains for us, and he's building his church, and he's, he's, it's an awesome thing to be part of it. So the first thing I'd like to do this morning is I'd like to invite you to dream big and believe big together with me as I reveal a few points of vision uh, for this year and, and things that I believe that we're going to accomplish. Now, this isn't everything. This is not exhaustive. Um, I'm, but I, but I want to take a few moments to share those, those points of purpose to just highlight those. But then when I'm done with that, I want to take a few moments at the end um, to share a thought that I hope will build your faith and build your personal vision, okay? So that's kind of the roadmap of what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with what I call vision reveals. Um, and, the, and the first thing I wanna reveal to you is something, it's really something I wanna rehearse with you and, and all of us together, and it's who we are as a church. Because in Habakkuk 3, it says, write the vision down, make it clear so they who hear it can run with it. And I find vision for your business, your organization, your NGO, wherever you're part, clarity of your vision can never be rehearsed too much. You, you have to have a clear vision if you're going to run with that vision. And our central vision, I, I want us to have clarity about who we are. And I, I came up with this graphic representation. Uh, and I'm going to show you here in a moment. But no, nope, no, nope, guys, not yet. I'm going to show well, now you've seen it. That's all right. Um, the, what we heard in, in the middle of worship, that video, give me this mountain. And that's something that I wrote with a sense of prophetic declaration. I, I felt like I was just prophesying as I wrote it. And it's a sense of these mountains and these, you know, these triangles that, we, that we're representing in a very symbolic way. But I felt as I was praying about the vision of the church and who are we as a church, these mountains came in play, but we put them in a pie chart. And now I will show this to you. Uh, because I don't know what to call this. I, it, we could call it our diagram uh, of discipleship. I kind of like the ecosystem of essentials. Um, we can call it whatever we want, but it's it's. It's who we are as a church. Is it on the screen? Okay. P because more and more now, people are asking, why church? Why church? What, 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 what does the church do for me? And, and of course, we understand that's a bit of a consumer approach, but the church does, the Bible says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord, their lives will flourish. 
And so there should be something that transpires. And so we see these eight essentials. They're, they're faith expressions that disciples embrace. Like if you're a, a disciple of Jesus, following Jesus, you start to embrace these things. Maybe not all at once. You know, maybe it takes some time. But you begin to embrace these. And the first one you can see in the 1 o'clock position, I think, is worship gatherings. And uh, why? Because we are a worshiping church. Amen? We're a worshiping church. Aren't we, Dulles? Come on, we're a worshiping church. And um, so what's that about? Encouraging you and your family to, to worship and encounter God and having a place where that can happen. Uh, number two position we see in essential small groups. And uh, we are a relationally invested church. If you don't have a friend at Citizen Heights within the next eight weeks, statistically, you will leave. That's what statistics tell us. And why would you stay? Because communion with God has a vertical component, but it also has a horizontal component. And we're a relationally invested church. And so small groups connecting you to grow in authentic God-centered relationships. The third essential we see is growth track and Bible equipping. And so that's because we are a hearing and doing church. Amen? We want to hear what God said, and then we want to get practical about doing what he said. And that means teaching and instructing in God's word so we can walk in the freedom that biblical truth brings to our lives. Uh, number four position is uh, team and serving. And I believe this is a big one for 2024. We'll go back in a minute and, and kind of highlight some points for each of these. But team and serving, that's activating your gifts and growing your influence by serving and leading others. And uh, we are an all-in, all-out, do-whatever-it-takes, consider-it-done, servant-minded church. We love to serve, and uh, team and serving allows us to do that. The fifth position is generational ministries. A and what that means is we are a youth movement. We are youth-involved, youth-invested, and youth-activated church. So our music will always be a little louder than I want it. It'll always be, you know, hopefully the graphics and, and things will be always a little cooler than the older folks. Uh, why? Because we want to not just attract a generation, but we want to empower a generation, helping them to know Jesus, helping them to know their Bible, helping them to know who they are, and helping them to stand strong in today's culture. And so we're a generational ministry minded. And, and then we see in the sixth position, outreach and missions. Why? Because we're a sending and reaching church. So sending you as hands and feet of Jesus. Sometimes you're the feet that go. Sometimes you're the hand that writes the check. Sometimes you're the, the intercessor who prays, right? We are a reaching and sending church uh, and, uh, you know, meeting needs, changing lives. And then in the seventh position, prayer and fasting. It should probably be, be in the number one position. Um, but just for clarity of the vision, we are an asking, seeking, knocking, praying church. And so we want to train and inspire you to be living a fasted lifestyle, right? And, uh, and, and praying prayers that not only change your world, but change the world. And then finally, uh, the last is generosity and kingdom builders is what our eighth essential. Why? Because we are a tithing, we are an offering, we are a generously giving church. And uh, we don't make any apologies about that because we're living the lifestyle of, of sowers and reapers because we started by being sowers. And the Bible says he gives seed to the sower. So if you're out of seed, you might want to check where there's a need for you to sow into. It's just a biblical principle and uh, we're, we're recognizing and releasing our call, your call and my call, to give generously to resource the local church and the kingdom of God. Amen? Where your treasure is, your heart is also. And uh, it, it, once you start giving, it's amazing how your heart attaches. So those are eight essentials. Like, What kind of church are we building? That's the kind of church. Does that get you excited? And from this graphic, we really want to highlight a few vision 
priorities. Just highlight a few vision things for 2024. So let's start now. I'm sure it will be expansive and it will be beyond some of the things we discussed today. Um, but let's start with the prayer and fasting essential. Uh, as our first vision reveal, if you will, we are an asking, seeking, knocking, and praying church. And so um, we just did 21 days of prayer in January, prayer and fasting. In August, we'll do another 21 days of possible where we pray and feast. We don't pray and fast. And uh, we also have Tuesday and Thursday, 7 a.m. prayer. And we also have Saturday, first Saturday prayer at 9 a.m. And uh, we issued um, earlier this year our 2024 prayer card. And uh, we'll be using this all year. And you'll see, if you look at the card, it's got these topo lines on it. It was all part of Give Me This Mountain. You just didn't know it. It was a sneak peek of it. Um, talking about giving me this mountain, 21 days of prayer, but also a prayer card that we live a lifestyle of prayer. We learn to pr the, the model prayer, the prayer that Jesus uh, taught his disciples. And this card really helps us do that. Uh, we've added altar and prayer times after each experience on Sunday so that you can come forward and somebody can pray with you and agree with you because we're a praying and fasting church. Amen? Uh, it, it, because there's a priority on prayer. Uh, there's a priority to learn how to tarry one hour in prayer. Don't ask me why, but when Jesus said, could you not tarry one hour and they fell asleep, there is something Listen, there is something supernatural on the other side of 60 minutes. When you pray, it's, and I'm telling you, the first time I did it, I was like, oh, could you not, Terry? I couldn't, God, but I did it for the first time, and this is going to be your first time in 2024 for some of us as we pray. And uh, a commitment to being a house of prayer, um, but also to practice the prayer of agreement. And we talked about this, so I'm excited to, get, to reveal uh, today a place where we can agree in prayer with one another. We call it the Give Me This Mountain prayer wall. And so that will be downstairs at Citizen Hall. It will be in the lobby at our Dulles campus. It's a place where you can lay your burdens down. It's a, play, a place where you can cast your cares upon the Lord. And there's these little Give Me This Mountain prayer stickers you can write your request on. You can stick it to the wall. You can leave your burden there. And uh, when we do Saturday morning first things first prayer we go over to the wall for a moment and we just lay hands on all those prayer requests and so uh we're going to be a praying church amen the third i guess this is the third uh, vision priority for 2024 is uh, we want to highlight generational ministries and so we're excited about that uh, you, and you don't have to clap for everything we'll clap all at the end unless it's just too good and we all do it but i mean where we go we go together so let's 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 all clap or or you know hang on and i don't know who decides that i'll be honest with you uh gavin can you decide that he has the thunderclap anointing so uh generational ministries if you don't know that means citizen ki citizen kids that's age six age zero through fifth grade uh, citizen Kids Ministry. It's also Citizen Youth. That's middle school and high school. And that's also Heights Young Adults, which is age 18 to... Uh, <laughs> some of us are younger adults than other young adults. Um, you, let your conscience be your guide, young adults. Uh, but that is a generational pipeline from children to middle school to high school to college to young adult and uh, we're a youth movement. We're youth involved, youth invested, youth activated. And so we're adding a, uh, as you heard on Church News today, we're adding a consistent Heights Young Adults monthly worship gathering, 7.30, the second Thursday of every month. And so that's this Thursday. Um, okay, I guess one or two will clap for that. We don't need to clap for everything. I will just... Let me just pro tip for Vision Day. The more we clap, the longer it takes. And there's empanadas being delivered at a certain time for the after party. So we want to be... And there it is. She, she doesn't want the empanadas. She's like, delay those. Um, so we're adding Heights Young Adults uh, gathering, monthly gathering. We're also adding a Heights Young Adults monthly house party. 
And so that is, that's where brides and grooms will be found. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, we've also combined our Heights Young Adults and our Citizen Youth team for greater strength. So we have greater strength in the team than ever before, creating a pipeline, listen, creating a, a pipeline that serves students from middle school all the way through college graduation and young professional years. And so those are leaders that know you through your whole spectrum of growing up, believe in you and, and have stood with you and been to camp with you and been at the altar with you. And so, and that's in citizen youth, um, we're, we're hitting camp level numbers on a weekly basis. And it used to be camp, summer camp was our biggest, you know, just everybody shows up. And now we're hitting those numbers on a weekly basis, dullest Sunday nights uh, here in Tenley Town on Wednesday nights for our middle school and high school students. And uh, we're going to bring more to camp than we've ever brought before. That's a big date on the calendar that we're going to give you today and send home with you. Uh, so a lot going on, but, but for citizen kids, uh, we have incredible leadership in 2024 stepping in to shepherd the young of the flock that we're going to be announcing some names at our next uh, uh, team gathering uh, later this month and, and celebrating some of that. Um, but we have great leadership, and uh, it's something we've been praying for for years uh, because we don't want to throw, you know how sometimes you, you find something old and busted up and broken down, and you're like, I'm going to drop this off at the church and see if they can use it. Did you hear the first part? <laughs> something old, busted up, broken down, and you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll donate this to the church. Um, it's amazing uh, that we do that. We do not give up, give our, 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 our crumbs and scraps to the next generation. We give our best. And so uh, for Citizen Kids, we're excited about great leadership coming in. And something that we're excited that we're going to send home with you today is our new Citizen Kids coloring book and activities book. And uh, here it is. And it is amazing. And you can see some of the cool stuff in here. And uh, it's good theology. It's just grade level theology for just for them. And uh, so we're teaching them who that there is something I think it's I can't remember what page it's on, but it's called the Citizen Kids Creed. And I have a my kids have been saying this for I don't know their whole lives. And I'll tell you what, adults would do a lot better if they would just say the Citizen Creeds every single day. It's just declaring what God has said about them. I am a citizen kid. I am brave. I am strong. I know who I am. You know, all these incredible things. Um, so that's our Citizen Kids activity and coloring book that we're going to send home with every, and your own Citizen Heights colors. Uh, so that's something that we want to invest because we're committed to this generation. Amen? And we want to improve our generational ministries. Uh, we're believing for staffing this year. We're believing for worship gatherings, for more house parties, a few engagements for the young adult professional crowd. Hey, it's going to be a great year for generational ministries. Now, let's, let's go, let's move on to number four. Our next vision priority that we want to highlight is outreach and missions, and, because we're ascending, reaching church. And so each year we serve uh, many people through our Heights Foundation. And our Heights Foundation is how we activate a lot of the things that we serve. That includes our local partners. It includes national partners and global partners. And so you can see a list of those on the screen, all the partners we have and, and the reach that we have as a church that when we give... That's where our giving goes, and it's reaching. So it includes feeding ministries, disaster relief ministries, church planting, um, ministries working to end human trafficking. Like, there are some tremendous things that the economy of scale, when you find something, somebody doing something at a high level, don't try to replicate it. Just get behind it. Right, And they're doing things at a scale that we want to co-sign. We want to partner and we want to send resources to. And this year, um, this past year in 2023, many of you know, we added new partners, Dean and Cheryl Cowles. No clapping, no clapping. I know we want to. Um, Tenwick Hospital uh, in Kenya and Calvary Church in Kenya, Citizen Heights Park, new park that's in Kenya, and a team that went, finances that were sown, and, it, and it's such a celebration. Uh, we have 
great vision, great partners. You can see some of them on the screen. But I'm excited to announce a new partner for 2024, and that is called the, it's called the Barnabas Network. And the Barnabas Net Network exists to help leaders and pastors finish the race. And so they encourage, they strengthen, and they grow leaders. So it's an investment in church planning and church finishing and pastoral training and leadership. And uh, one of their, one of their uh, quotes is, live strong, finish well. And uh, I love that uh, because in the last few years, we've seen the great resignation of many churches closing and pastors leaving and, and all of those things. And uh, you strike the shepherd, the sheep do scatter, and it's a main uh, uh, strategic ploy of the enemy. And so we're going to sow, just like we sow into church planting, we want to sow a little bit into church sustaining as well. So that'll be a new partner that I'm excited uh, to see um, what God does through. Amen? So, and then for missions and outreach, last reveal for this highlight is um, we're excited to uh, announce the official launch of our missions kiosk. And so this is a touchscreen map. Uh, it's a kiosk where you'll see points of light uh, on the map. Anybody old school went to the church with the map on the wall with the little lights? So this is new school. It'll, it'll have the points of light on the touchscreen map uh, that are denoting points of impact. Uh, that's where your giving is making a difference around the world. So it'll showcase all of our local, our national, and our global partners. Uh, partners like our Child Development Center in El Salvador. Amen? Pretty exciting. Uh, partners like Convoy of Hope, which it has outposts in 130 countries dealing with disaster response. And local partners like She's My Daughter right here in D.C. supporting and training young women for success. So you'll be able to just touch the map and, and see the description and keep the vision in front of you. I have found Vision Day is great for a declaration, but vision leaks. Have you found that? <laughs> you set a vision, and then it kind of like, uh, you lose sight of it. Um, that's why I think before and after photos are a great motivating force on your mirror, because you're like, don't lose sight. I remember the first time, uh, well, we're getting personal now, but <laughs> I remember the first time I, I broke 200 pounds, and uh, somebody took a photo of me, and I saw it, and I was like, who is that? And they're like, that's you. And I was like, do I have any friends? How come none of you told me this was happening? <laughs> And I took that photo, I put it on my mirror, and it was wonderful motivation uh, to keep the vision in front of you. How many know uh, vision can leak, but when we keep it in front of us, so you'll go by the kiosk, you'll pray for some of those ministries, you'll celebrate what God is doing in some of those places. So the next vision priority we'd like to highlight for 2024 is uh, fifth, the fifth one is team and serving, the essential of team and serving. And I'm really excited about this because we're an all-in do what it takes, consider it done, servant-minded church, amen? And so team is what we celebrate. Team is, is how we serve people every Sunday. Team uh, gives you the fabric of community and the fabric of support. Team is, is a place to invest and grow your gifts and get your hand on the weight of vision. And so team is where you make a difference and uh, it's where we can all run with a vision. So what, one of the things we're sending home with you today, and we'll put it on the screen, is what we're calling mountaintop moments for 2024. Because to be an effective team, we have to, um, it, part of it is just the practical reality of scheduling and knowing when are we advancing? When are we taking that mountain? When are we going forward together? And so we have big growth moments for church planned through team and through serving, moments where we go all in and go all out. We invite big, we bring big, we believe big, and then we serve big, and we watch what God does. Amen? So that's a big, that's a, a a big thing for me personally because as team goes, so goes the church. Like you couldn't find a more directly correlated thing of the health of a church, the health of the team. Those are directly proportional to one another. So our goal is not to schedule you and use you. Our goal is to, is, is to um, activate you and see you be healthy because a healthy person is a serving, leading person. And so... Uh, the biggest thing I'm excited about for team is today we're also announcing a new monthly team gathering moment. It's called Heart and Soul. It's going to be on the fourth Thursday of every month. 
you know, we just got through 21 days of prayer and fasting. We found out Thursdays really fit for people. And so Thursdays is kind of like that. Thursdays are holy at Citizen Heights because if you're part of the worship team, you've got some rehearsals on Thursday. If you're part of young adults, you've got a, a, a gathering on Thursday. Well, the fourth Thursday is holy because it's heart and soul. It's team. We'll all come together at each campus, and uh, we will pray, and we will celebrate, and we will um, encourage one another, and uh, excited for those mountaintop moments together. Amen. Finally, for 2024, we're getting to the end of the reveals. You did it. You're doing great, church. Uh, and that's, I want to go back to the first essential that we mentioned. We are a worshiping church. And uh, that means encouraging you and your family to worship God, to encounter God. And it, worship is not something that is exclusive to the temple. It goes with you where you go. But Understand, the vision of a local church is to provide a corporate moment for corporate worship. You should be worshiping wherever you go, but when you come here, encountering God is a big deal. It, it, and in the Old Testament, you always brought your best to the temple, right? Because they would bring their sacrifice. You never brought your spotted sheep. You brought the best sheep, right? You always brought your best, and there was excellence. So I want to talk about, when we talk about a worshiping church in the temple, I want to talk to you about excellence in our facilities. Okay? All right. I do want amens for this section. I'll just be honest with you. Why? Because it's where you worship. It's where you lead. It's where you serve. It's where you give. It's where you invite others. It's where, you it's where your friends encounter Jesus. It's where you baptize your children. It's where you say your vows. Like excellence in facilities says if we can handle plaster and carpet, we might be able to handle their marriage problem. Right? If you can handle the little stuff, it shows that you can be trusted with the really important stuff. And so our facilities are not at their best. Um, Dulles, be quiet for a minute. <laughs> with all your fancy tech and your your good stuff. No, but our facilities really, there's a long list of needs, and, and that's vision. And, and, and I was joking about Dulles Campus because at the Dulles Campus, the parking lot needs to be done. A play structure needs to be replaced, and we were really hoping to get that last year, and we just never got to it with the amount of funds that came in. So Dulles Campus, there's, there's facility excellence that is lacking, and then we could talk about Tenley Town. And... Uh, Audiovisual needs, screen needs, camera needs, roofing needs, water infiltration needs, restroom needs, painting and carpet needs. Uh, Tenley Town is, uh, listen, Tenley Town needs Jesus. <laughs> it's, it's a long list. I mean, Tenley Town needs Jesus and arson or a couple millionaires. And, uh, and I'm not especially picky. <laughs> I revoke that statement about arson. I don't mean that. That's a joke if we're watching this back six months from now and it somehow happened. But facilities are where you care for people. People can say they don't matter, but they matter. And so we're speaking to some mountains and we're believing for some campus upgrades and, and I want to say this. I wasn't planning to get deep into this, but uh, we're, we're believing God for big things, and there's a grant that's available for historic churches, and we've applied it and, and not been awarded in the past. We're applying again this year. It's a $250,000 grant that requires a $250,000 match. That means, and I just felt like, let's get a head start working on the match, and then let's go, let God work on getting our application to the top. And a half a million dollars, I don't, I mean, I feel like, you know, there's lots of room here for, I, I joke with our staff and I say, we could put $3 million into this building and maybe not notice it. Um, boy, that makes me sad. And this is vision day. So we're going to get back into uh, just believing God for that grant. And I'll say this, uh, I have a sense uh, that God is going to position us for an upgrade in a supernatural way. And I don't know what that'll look like or where it'll happen. But I do have a sense for that. So 
those are some vision highlights for 2024. Now, bonus vision is, I want to reveal to you right now, we'll put it up on the screen, is something really cool. It doesn't really, we don't have a pie chart for this, but it's, it's a church store. It's uh, an opportunity for us to carry the vision, run with the vision, and now you can rep the vision. Uh, and we have apparel. You guys, quicker, quicker. We're moving quick. And so, yeah, we have, are these giveaways? Are these giveaways? Yeah, so, so check it out. We got stuff. Okay, look what he's wearing. Look at this. This mountain fanny pack, stylishly worn by a single man who is absolutely available, as far as I know, and gainfully employed. Um, go ahead, turn around for a second. And this is this mountain sweat hoodie. Say to this mountain, be moved from here. We've got Citizen of Heaven. Come over here. Show us Citizen of Heaven. Do we have a graphic on the back too? Is there a graphic? Oh, check it out. So, so who wants a This Mountain t-shirt? Okay, I see you. Come, come over here, Mary. I got Mary. There's Mary. And then, who wants the hoodie? Dulles Campus, I know. Who wants it? Raise your hand if you want this. They're available downstairs. You can just go ahead and buy one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's good. You can take the rack. Um, rep your church. Tell people about your church. There's a lot of um, different options on the store that you can, uh, that you can help out and, and uh, get some apparel, tote bags. Are, are, are they seeing the... Okay, you see, you see. So it's on the app. It's on the website. And... Um, and what's Vision Day? Last thing, what's Vision Day without sending each family home with a Vision Day gift bag? And so at the after party, immediately following, um, there is going to be a table with your Vision Day gift bag, and you can grab your bag. It'll have, um, you can grab a coloring book, an activities book for your kids. Um, there's other good things in there. You get your own fanny pack. This is going to be my pool bag. Perfect size for my AirPods. Is that what they're called? Okay, I always call them Air Buds, and my kids let me know. Um, so uh, you got this. There's other stuff that is is in there as well. You got a oh, I know where it is. You got a coupon code for the store. You've got your uh, give me this mountain mountain moments uh, schedule with with your moments. You got your coupon card. You got your book. You got some patches. You got a window sticker for your car. So that's in the gift bag. Make sure you grab one of those before you leave today. And uh, Vision Day is about God's vision for your life. And I'm not totally ready yet, Brian. Sorry. Um, I, 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 I tried to cut it. You're, you're stuck with this. This is because announcing a bunch of objectives to do is awesome, and I love it. But there has to be faith. Vision doesn't happen without faith. And so everything we've talked about today comes together um, with this card that's going to be in the, the gift bag for you. It's our Heart for the House commitment card. And you heard a little bit about it during church news, um, but that's where we pledge each year. And it says pray, commit, plan, give. Simple as that. And this is above and beyond our tithes and our, you know, our normal giving to help fund some of the things we're talking about today. And so it comes down to big vision and all of us together kind of carrying that weight. And one thing I just want to say about this is we always say it's above and beyond, beyond, above and beyond things, above and beyond the tithe. And so I would just say this, if you're not tithing it, let that be your step of faith for 2024. Let that be your step of faith. Uh, but for, for others who are already at that rung of the ladder, take your next step and pledge and give. And uh, next week is our Heart for the House Sunday where we give first fruits. Usually we try to give 10% of what we've pledged on our first fruit Sunday. And we hand in the card. And we have a vision. And with all of us praying and believing and planning and uh, pledging and giving, more mountains. Amen? More mountains. And... Uh, but I, I do want to switch gears just for a moment, a brief moment, and share one thought with you uh, that will build faith for your vision. Are you ready? 
this is going to go, uh, I, I believe this is going to go well. I told Heather, I was like, I, I can't cut I can't cut it. I have to, I have to share this because this is the prophetic part of what we want to, I, I want to remind you uh, today. I want to stir you. I want to persuade you. I want to somehow urge you and, and convince you that God has big things. God has called you to take high ground. And I feel a burden to, to kind of negotiate with you in the spirit and pull you into a place. The first passage I ever preached at this church we were just, you know, a starting new church. Didn't have Sunday mornings yet. It was an unassuming Thursday night down on C Street in Capitol Hill. We were renting a Baptist church. And the first passage I ever preached on in this church was Matthew 5. You are a city set on a hill. And this, the, the heights of Citizen Heights is you are a city set on a hill. To shine the light of the gospel of Jesus. And, and, and the thought is, when you're serving God, and when you're part of his vision for your life, it, he takes you to new heights. And God has called you to take the high ground, and we're called to take the high ground. And, and specifically, this church is, is destined, listen to what I'm saying right now, this church is destined to take difficult assignments with incredible faith and trust. There are certain units in military that are designed to take difficult tasks and scenarios. We are that church, one of many great churches, I'm happy to say, who have a similar assignment here and around the capital. So I want to share with you this thought from Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we could just go through it. What can I do? All things. Through who? Christ. Who gets the strength? Me. Who gets the strength? Me. Who do I get it through? Christ. What do I get it for? To do all things. Not just the easy breezy things. Not just the lowland things. Not the that's my lane things. Mountains. Understand, it's, it's an all things, tall things anointing. It's the big things anointing. And if God is our strength, as Philippians 4 tells us, if God is our strength, then all things are within our grasp when we have godly vision. So God birthed vision is always, it always starts with the impossible. And there's that quote I heard years ago, I loved it. It said, it, it was, first it's impossible, then it's difficult, then it's done. And, you, and, and that is kind of what you see in 19 years. First, it was impossible. I can't tell you how many people said, don't go, don't, don't go to D.C. No way. Don't go there. You'll never get a building. Your kids won't be able to go to the public school. They, on and on and on and on. First, it's impossible. Then it was difficult. But vision today is a testimony tomorrow. This is like stoppage time in a soccer game where all the applause, I get stoppage time. You've got mountains in your forecast for 2024. I just want to put you on notice, but also give you vision and faith for what's coming. Understand, you have mountains in your forecast for 2024. Not just because it's an election year and this city is especially fragile in election years. More and more so. His church will not be. We will be a communion with a common unity. That's what community is. It's common unity in the essential thing, Jesus. There are mountains in the forecast for your 2024. And understand, there are two types of mountains. And this is where I'll leave you. There are two types of mountains. Mark 11 says there's the type of mountain that we speak to the mountain to see it moved. That's the first kind of mountain. Those are mountains that are barriers to remove. So we name them only to notify them that they are being moved. We are speaking to those mountains. And this year we will speak to sickness. We will speak to disease. 
We will speak to discouragement. We will speak to confusion and financial difficulties and spiritual adversaries. We will speak to those mountains that are on notice to be moved. And we will move those mountains. And we'll speak to the mountains on behalf of others, for our children, for our spouse, for our friends, for our family, co-workers, for our church, for our city, for our nation. We will speak for them to be moved and removed. So understand, there's two types of mountains. There's speak to the mountain to be removed, Mark 11 mountain. But there's a second kind of mountain, and that mountain is found in Joshua 14. So I want to give you this last text. And this mountain is not a mountain to be removed. It's a mountain to be, it's a, it's a blessing to be embraced. So we're not just going to move mountains. We're going to take mountains. Let me show you Joshua 14, just I think five or six verses. And this is Caleb's testimony and his story. Your story, my story. We have a similar story. Are you ready? It said, Caleb says, and he's talking to Moses. He says, what, I was 40 years old. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's talking to Joseph, Joshua. No, he's not. He's talking to Joshua. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back a word to him as it was in my heart. I brought back a good report. This is the promised land. We are well able to take it. Verse 8, nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me blew it. Their hearts melted. He says, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Caleb, surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Verse 10, and now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said he would, these 45 years. He says, it's been 45 years since I've seen that land, but I still have a vision of it. He says, it was 45 years and then listen what he says. And since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old, as yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength, strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out, for coming in. Now therefore, say it with me, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there. Anakim are giants, literal giants. Goliath, but a whole city and mountain of them. Right? And that the cities were great and fortified. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron, formerly Kerjath Arba, because Arba was the greatest man among the giants, the Anakim. Understand, as we wrap this up, Caleb had a dream. And his vision was for a mountain city named Kerjath Arba, named after the biggest giant, of the Anakim. It's a city of giants named after the, the most notorious warrior. And so all these giants and warriors live here, and Caleb knows, and he's had 45 years to think about that land and can't wait to get back to it. Understand, Caleb, Caleb wasn't just taking, he wasn't just taking the mountain, he was taking on the giants of the mountain. Understand what that meant. And it's not like it was a rash thing. Like sometimes we do a great thing in faith and it's really because we didn't have time to talk ourselves out of it. But Caleb is 40 years old and sees this land and loves it and wants it and says, giants, no problem. I'm strong to war and God is with me. But there's an evil report in the camp and they say, that vision's too big, God can't do it. And God says, okay, then you're not the generation to take this land as a promise. Instead, you will go back into the wilderness and you will wander for 45 years. And Caleb is one of faith who said, give me this mountain, and then had to watch in his rearview mirror as it decreased in size as he went to wander for 45 years. And for 45 years, he got to consider how big those giants were, how vast that mountain community of warriors was. And yet when he returns to the place at 85, 
He says, I'm as strong now as I was when you promised me this mountain. Give me this mountain. It's my promise. It's my destiny. It's my inheritance. It's a vision bigger than me. But God is with me. God wants to give you a bigger vision. I speak this and I go long today to, to encourage you. Taking impossible mountains involves taking impossible adversaries. Don't let the adversaries scare you from the promise. Don't let the difficulties dissuade you, uh, uh, dissuade you away from what God has promised you. Heather and I were talking, wow, we've got a list of mountains. We were talking at the end of 2023 and we were just getting kind of overwhelmed because we're, we were naming our mountains. And, and I'm okay with naming a mountain if it's only to give it notice for removal, <laughs> you know? And I said, wow, we've got some mountains. We started to name the ones that we need to move. And, and, and there was seven of them in all. They weren't all for removal, but most of them felt like they were for removal. And so we're just, we just talked about, oh, these are the seven mountains. That's what I've been praying for 21 days. That's what I wrote in my prayer card. It's what I'm going to be praying for 2024. Get, remove this mountain. But then there's an, a couple others that will be renamed. These, they are not barriers to move. They are blessings to embrace. And we just, I remember just in the kitchen with Heather and I said, one by one, mountain by mountain, let God be God. We don't have to fight all seven mountains at once. We don't have to take them all at once. And Caleb says, I'm as strong now as I was when Moses promised. God always finishes what he starts. God, God, was, God was Caleb's secret source of strength. It's the secret source of strength that gives you vision to go back to that thing after years and say, nope, this was part of the promise. Philippians 1.6 tells us, being confident of this very thing, that he which begun a good work in me will be faithful to complete it. I like the message paraphrase. It says, there has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day Christ appears. God started a great work in you. And there's a flourishing finish. There's a boldness. There's a confidence. You're getting your confidence back because your secret source of strength is God is with me. And it might have been a few years, but he's still with you. Do you hear me? Stop making excuses tied with your age. Tied to your age. Stop blaming your season and your station and your situation. Stop blaming your inventory, what I do have, what I don't have. Caleb has a God-sized, super-sized, like giant-sized, mountain-sized vision. And in Joshua 14, 15, we just read it. And the name of Hebron was formerly Kerjath Arba, a mountain of mur named after a murderous giant, becomes the mountain of the Lord. He just renamed that mountain. There's mountains that you move, and then there's mountains that you rename. Hebron means a place of communion and community. It means a place of joining together a place of joining together, a place of communion. Come on, we have a vision that Jesus himself gave us. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Communion with him and community with one another. It's Hebron. We, we took that mountain and rena re we renamed it in a divisive city, in a tough region, in a, in a difficult spot, in a difficult season, all the excuses that there might be. And we said, no, 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 just give me that mountain. We'll rename it. It's good. We see the potential in the promise that God gave us. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to close now. And again, thank you for, we don't normally go this long, but Vision Day, it's once a year to roll out so much. And we're going to open the front for prayer as we officially dismiss here in a few moments. 
but I want you to stand to your feet, just close your eyes, and we have a, a response all together. And I want to pray for you for vision for your life. Maybe no moving around for a few moments. Close your eyes right where you are. Vision for your, for your life. Start here. Start in this place. Start with us. Start with the sense that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Start with that confidence that he doesn't abandon his promises. He watches over his word to perform it. Get a vision so big that it changes a city. Get a vision so big that it defeats an enemy. Get a vision so big it ushers in a generational place of rest and refuge for those who come after you. That's a big vision. So, Father, we say as a church, count us in. Father, as a church, we say we want to be like Caleb. You show us the mountain. Let there be faith that accompanies it. Let the strength of God. And let there be strength in one another as we as we go to a place of prayer and we go to a place of fighting and we go to a place of of warring even in the spirit even in ways we don't fully comprehend or understand father we know that there are spiritual battles in a realm beyond what we can see and taste and touch and and hear and smell father we want to be a praying church we want to be a worshiping church we want to be a church that is able to, to hear what God is, is saying in advance together in unity. A church that has communion with you. And a church that has community with one another. A church that is a place of joining together in the same vision. So we say God right here, right now, with every eye closed. You're hearing a lot about vision today, and you really don't know where you fit in that vision. And if you were to be honest, maybe you'd admit and say, well, I don't even know where I fit, not only in this vision, but with God. I don't even know where I stand with God. And we're not going to dismiss today until we take this next 30 seconds to answer that question for you. The Bible says that we find him at the foot of the cross, that Jesus died on the cross, rose again on the third day, was resurrected And that act that is historically verified by over a hundred eyewitnesses, not only in biblical accounts, but in extra biblical, secular, historical accounts. It takes no faith historically to believe that Jesus lived, died, and rose again. It's verifiable by eyewitness testimony. But it does take faith to do what the Bible says, and that is rest from your works, Rest from trying to earn God's approval and by faith simply receive the gift of his forgiveness. That's the gospel. It's good news because it's not something you work for and earn. It's forgiveness and a gift that you just receive. So on the count of three with every eye closed, I'm gonna gonna invite you to lift your hand and say, Pastor, include me in that prayer. And I'm not gonna draw attention to you or, or try to get you to walk up front I'm just going to, every eye is closed in here. There's no looking around, no moving around. But by lifting your hand, you're saying, I need Jesus in my life. might be the first time you've ever done it, but it might be a recommitment moment because you know you're not where you need to be and you have no confidence of where you stand with God. On the count of three, one, don't wait. Today is a new day. Two, he loves you right where you are, but he loves you too much to leave you there. He comes to meet you in this place. Are you ready? One, two, three, hands in the air. Say, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else say, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Hands all over. Thank you. Just lift your hands and say, yeah, include me in that prayer. You're not joining a church. You're not saying you have all the answers. You're saying, I know the answer to one question, and that's, I need Jesus. Praise God. Hands all over. You can put your hands down. Maybe you didn't feel comfortable lifting your hand, but you know this is for you. You're going to pray this with us nice and loud all together. Dear Jesus, I give you my life because you first loved me. So I surrender my life, all I am, all I used to be, and all I hope to be. I put my life in your hands. Now say this boldly. I am a Christian. By God's grace, I'm saved. 
It's his gift to me. I didn't earn it. I just receive it by faith. In Jesus' name. Come on, can we celebrate with those who just prayed that prayer? We welcome you. We welcome you. We're going to go ahead now and turn you back over to your campus over at our Dulles campus. Pastor Heather over there. And uh, as we do, uh, once again, we just can we just celebrate and say welcome to the family one more time for those who just prayed that prayer.